Gabriela uh, received her MA and PhD from Stanford University. Uh, she's the first editor of Presumed Incompetent, The Intersections of Race and Class for Women in Academics, Volume 1, and editor of the Bolsos de Palabras, and Elena Maria Viramontes Reader, which is the winner of the 2014 International Latino Book Award. Uh, as well as World Images, New Perspectives on Canicula, and other works by uh, uh, Norma Elia Cantu, and Communal Feminism, Theorizing the Space of Exile, Class, and Identity. Gabriela also has authored the recently published and forthcoming poetry collection, Needing Words, Amasando Palabras, and How Many Indians Can We Be? Her published poetry collections are Runaway Poems, A Most Improbable Life, and the plastic book book. She was a commissioner for the arts for the state of Washington from 2014 to 2017. He, uh, and she's the daughter of migrant farm workers and she herself was a past field and cannery worker herself. Le gusta mucho empatizar eso, ¿no? Porque siempre tiene mucho orgullo de lo que es, ¿no? Con muchos de nosotros que fuimos primera generación estudiantes uh, universitarios. Y como dice ella, no, ya basta de la humildad, porque es humility. So her poetry has been anthologized and read around the world, and she has been keynote speaker in many places around the world too. So les presento, vamos a recibirla con aplauso, por favor. It's so wonderful to be here in the largest university in the United States, I'm here. So, um, thank you so much for coming. Like I said yesterday to uh, give another presentation to graduate students, um, I'm here for you. I don't mind interruptions. If you see something, if you see a poem or something you want to ask about, that's why I'm here for you. So um, please go ahead and interrupt me. Um, I'm going to start um, reading some poems from How Many Indians Can We Be? It's a collection that I started when I got on the plane um, to go to India in 2011 when I represented the United States as one of three American poets in India, in Nampur, um, Mumbai, and Chennai. And uh, I always tell people when I, when I talk about rituals, and if some of you are writers, I recommend that you create your own rituals because what I do is that every time I get on a plane, I get a poem. So that's, that's my space, and, and the only place where nobody can touch me, right? <laughs> Except the person you're sitting next to. <laughs> um, and this collection started then, but really the idea for it began before that, when my two sons were in, sitting in the back seat in Seattle, and uh, because there was no box for Mexicans when we arrived in Seattle in the school district, uh, they checked native, Indian, right? Native American. And so when they were, we were driving by, I told them, Paul, just telling you how creativity hands, uh, begins, right? And you know what I told them, Paul, right? It's made by Native Americans. And my sons are telling this boy, who's a son of Indians from India, um, look, that's our ancestors made that. <laughs> and the little boy looks at him and he says, you're not Indian, I'm Indian. <laughs> so this, how many Indians can we be? And that became totally problematized when I went to India, right? where we had so many, I had so many similarities um, in the way I saw the world to people from India, from so far away. And um, so I started making those connections, also thinking of somewhere else. I usually, I didn't bring my sari this time, but I usually wear a sari <laughs> when I read these poems. Um, so I'll start by reading that. Lately, in terms of creative writing, poetry, I was explaining to the graduate students yesterday, that really 30 years ago, you used to publish poems individually. But now, it's almost like a novel, a poetry collection where people edit is that it's really a lot of poems like a novel. You're 
Italian different aspects of that story. So I'll read from that first. Secondly, I will read from the Runaway Poems. Um, this is a book that the Viamonte will win a Royal Prize, so you can look at these books afterwards. And like I said, please ask me. But I'll read for a little bit and then I'll get back. Okay? Any questions now? Only today you can ask me anything you want. No? No questions about me? My career? Now that? Okay. Okay. Do all of you understand Spanish? Yes. Uh, I, I still have questions. Okay. This is my husband of 30 years. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Yes. What yeah, we'll, we'll get to it later. Okay. Um, you then we, we've only got a couple hours. <laughs> I read a couple of these yesterday in um, sí. de vez en cuando me voy a dar son diferentes. ¿Quieres que te No, está bien, de vez en cuando. I think I'll actually begin with uh, another separate poem. It's called The Aranya Poem, Spider and I. You and I, we walk the trapeze, life's tightrope of tragedy. We share the fact that we may not save our web beyond today. Tansa Flight 756. I'm an explorer, and my instrument, a book, my tool, a pen. I will unfortunately not know how many pirates were on board with me on Lufthansa Flight 756, but I am a pirate going to steal knowledge from other Indians. I am on a quest for observations that are distant from my own for ways of not only pain so close. Across the almost all ocean map, the dot on the screen travels to find where the name India, so spelled across geography, comes from. Second poem, you don't have to clap by the way till the end, because I'm just going to keep reading. I know you want to clap at the end. <laughs> The second poem I wrote to one of my students is a migrant, uh, immigrant migrant, wonderful student who's at, uh, at Columbia right now, getting uh, a PhD. But he was so happy I was going to India, and he said, "Hi, professor, you're gonna do what Columbus did it, right? <laughs> you're gonna get to go to India." So I wrote this letter to Columbus. So Yama Columbus dear. I would understand why your confusion reached enormous density upon arriving in the West Indies. Why you envision your grandeur of generous proportions adored in front of such aquiline-nosed Indians of a different race or not. Perhaps the eyes of the future would have told you that your violence propelled us to kill cows and fry them and that in India the cows walk around blessed. Tell those cows who died a short life you didn't mean to colonize us. Should we have been first to receive a more gentle colonization? In a world of expert colonizers, expert illiterates, expert appropriators, expert lovers of indigenous women. And this is one of my favorite poems. It's called Manhood. And for you who work on masculinity, you know, this is a poem I was talking about yesterday. And I wrote it because. 
because every night we used to take a taxi from the downtown. I was staying in Chennai with one of the, my colleague's mothers. And she lived in a colony of retired intellectuals. And we would take um, a taxi over there every night. She's a musician that performed almost every day. And on the way there, I would see all these guys, the working class guys, they're wearing their, their lungi, which is a skirt. And they're outside, and there's usually groups of four to six men. And they're usually like touching each other, hugging, massaging the back. They were all drinking um, this, uh, it's called a tasma. It's this, uh, like the pineapple, the pache. Fermented, the pache is fermented pineapple. So they're drinking this fermented liquor that the government supplements for them. Because a lot of them are working class guys and they don't want them to drink something else, right? So <laughs> there's all these boots of asthma. And these guys are just having fun and you know, touching each other. Something, you know, maybe you'll see in Latin America, maybe you see it, you know, at a soccer game or something. But something we rarely see in the United States. And so I wrote this poem about a different manhood. Manhood exhibited on the street, men buying tasma, drinking, holding hands tenderly in a tic-tac-toe of life with their friends in a square, in lungi, touching different parts of the loved friend's body to not lose contact with their hearts. Squalid dogs and holy cows watching envious from the road, except the astounded dog who could no longer walk. Passerby tourists watching envious from the cars, intimacy, a difficult product to export. Feminine manhood, not yet patented by the West. Outside of stadiums. Well, so I'll read that last line again. Feminine manhood not yet patented by the West outside of stadiums. My eyes skip the beat. My humanity is in diapers in India where people understand that to let you live is already an advantage. Tamed tongues. What we share in common amongst the seeds of languages that detonate difficult on the plane culturally is that we are mestizos. We're all tamed by the language we work in. One billion Indians and 50 million Latinos with a dilemma of what step to take in saying. <coughs> I've come to learn the English of evolved colonization. The word is a cut on the flesh of language. The background noise of adversity, the buzzing of the precedent of these, the tracks of colonization have reached domains unexpected. So a lot of times I speak five languages and people always think when you go, mm, in English or a <laughs> in Spanish or uh, in French. Oh, what a dummy, they don't remember, they can't find that word. But the reality is that we speak several languages, right? <laughs> That's why we have a hard time downloading what we need. Um, this is called traffic in Madras, and I'm basically describing right what was happening tonight. Any questions here? No? Hey, well. Was it via the English stereotypes? I now understand three and a moped is common, four normal. How do you learn to drive when the road is narrower than your life? Women on saris on the back of a motorbike sit holding on to their futures, their children spilling. There's people lining the road statuesquely. Who put the cars on the road? 
red, white, and greenish garlands, almost the Mexican flag on their faces. The face of India we see in the U.S. Unisex, smiling, accomplished, dignified. Flowers on the tails of the bikes. Women hold a rear with their garlands of jasmine and love. The rules of the road, the gas tanks traveling, the kitchens represent food, the hunting as a rule, not an exception. The balloons, the colors of all the saris in one board, golden statues with garlands. I'm on the road to a song of cars. Old men without shoes walk behind their, behind their sandaled sons. Political signs on the road, bearded gurus and glass politicians, mostly bindi women, bindi in the world. Mostly bindi women waiting for buses, yellow and blue tracks, footpaths, fruit stands, papayas, pineapple, bananas, cut exactly for human consumption.